What's up, guys? It's your boy Benny. In times of tragedy, it's good to have a serious leader. Of course, we all love memeing Donald Trump. We all love savage Trump because you'd be in jail. Trump, Trump meme lord. We do a little trolling. We love that Trump. But there's also these moments where Donald Trump hugs the soldier or the gold star families and it behaves like a solemn and thoughtful leader. It's important because we live in a sunken world and bad things happen. Wars pop off. People have their lives destroyed in storms. And Donald Trump is just so good, so profoundly good in these moments. And he's flanked by a number of other Republicans who are also spectacular in this, uh, in putting America first. And this is actually what the crystallization of America first looks like. America first looks like putting your countrymen first, ladies and gentlemen. So Donald Trump, in the aftermath of the multiple hurricanes that have hit Florida and led to, the, to dozens of deaths, hundreds of deaths of Americans across the country, uh, put out a beautiful message uh, today to the people who are trying to politicize this moment. Donald Trump, simply a prayerful and thoughtful message. We'll play it for you in just a moment. Uh, but it's been the left who have been trying to take this opportunity to politicize all of this or score cheap political points. These are, of course, the beautiful linemen that have lined up to save people from downed power lines. They're staying at Trump's properties, by the way. Hundreds of linemen have been given free rooms at one of Trump's resorts outside of Miami in order to help their fellow Americans. Here they are checking in with the golden, with the, the crystal chandeliers and the, the quarried marble and all of their uh, all of their gear on. It's kind of it's a, quite, a, quite a shot there. Uh, Trump gives free hotel rooms. To hurricane workers. This is what America first looks like. America last looks like trying to use these moments where people have had their lives devastated. This was, of course, a, a direct hit into Tampa Bay, where I live. Uh, people have had their lives destroyed. This is like Tropicana Field, right? This is where the baseball team plays. Uh, cranes falling down, houses burning, uh, millions without power. Uh, these are like the trees in my neighborhood and all fallen over, right. And, and torn down power lines, those power lines and flash flooding. This is, this is my gas station actually in Tampa. Uh, the power lines and flash flooding can cause horrible damages and be very, very dangerous. And so like, it's very good that people got out evacuated like I did and that our leaders like Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump take this stuff with the seriousness that it requires Ron DeSantis, who has been excellent through this hurricane, just gave a press conference where one of the reporters asked him, uh, did the tornado come from global warming? This is an example of trying to politicize the death and destruction that have been caused by an act of God and to try and score a political point or some type of partisan point. Instead of asking about the people whose lives have been destroyed or the people who had to evacuate their families, they're asking about politics. Kamala Harris is doing the exact same thing. Ron DeSantis shutting both of them down. This is a master class. Ron DeSantis, go. Tornadoes? Yeah, it's tornadoes in I, I, I think you could go back and find tornadoes uh, for all of human history, for sure. Um, and especially, you know, Florida, uh, you know, how does this storm uh, rate in, um, in, in kind of the, the history of storms? Uh, I think it hit with uh, a barometric pressure of, what was it, about 950 millibars when it, yes, when it hit? Um, which uh, I, I think if you go back to, to 1851, uh, there's probably been 27 hurricanes uh, that have had lower bear. So the lower the barometric pressure, the stronger it is. I think there have been about 27 hurricanes that have had lower barometric pressure on landfall than Milton did. And of those, um, 17 uh, occurred, I think, prior to 1960. And the most powerful hurricane on record since the 1850s in the state of Florida occurred in the 1930s, the Labor Day hurricane. Barometric pressure on that was 892 millibars. Uh, it totally wiped out uh, the keys. Uh, we've never seen anything like it. And that remains head and shoulders above any powerful hurricane that we've ever had in the state of Florida. The most deadly hurricane we've ever had was in 1928. The Okeechobee hurricane killed over 4,000 people. Fortunately, uh, we aren't going to have anything close to that on this hurricane. But even ones like Ian, where you had, uh, you know, deep wasn't even close to that. So you know, I just think people should put this in perspective there. They try to, to take different things that happen with tropical weather and act like it's something. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, you know, this is something that the state has dealt with for its entire history. 
uh, and it's something that we'll continue to be to deal with. I think what's changed is we've got 23 million people. Um, a storm that hits is likely to hit more people and property than it would have 100 years ago, and so the potential for, for that damage um, has grown. But what's also changed is our ability to do the prevention, uh, to pre-stage the assets. I mean, we never did the pre-staging of power uh, assets until I became governor. Now people like expect that, but that wasn't what was done in the past. That's why people would be out with power for three weeks when we'd have hurricanes. We thought that that's not good. Now we have to pay to get these guys to come in, but my view is the quicker you get everyone hooked up, the better off the economy is going to be anyway. So why don't we just do that? Uh, having the different search and rescue, having a state guard, all these different things are just bringing different tools to the fight, uh, and it allows us to respond more effectively. So if we had the tools that we had in 1928 to fight an Ian or to fight some of these, you would have had higher death tolls. There's no question about that. Ron DeSantis, who is engaged in an absolute leadership master class here in the state of Florida, doing uh, God's work when it comes to pushing Kamala Harris away from this process so she can't F it up more. Kamala Harris has been attacking Ron DeSantis, who his state has suffered from multiple deadly hurricanes in two weeks uh, time. Uh, effectively saying Kamala Harris has no, you have no power here. <laughs> Hey, Governor, could you just help uh, clear something else up that happened earlier this week? And we were actually debating it uh, at this table, so I, I got to ask. Uh, there was uh, some praise that came your way from President Biden uh, and said that the, they had spoken, you had spoken. Then there was this brouhaha over uh, Vice President Harris apparently reaching out to you uh, or, and maybe not taking the call and this whole thing, uh, accusations that this had all become politicized. Can you just speak to what happened there? I am working with the president of the United States. I'm working with the director of FEMA. I'm marshalling all my state assets. We've been doing this now nonstop for over two weeks between Helene and this. And so if there's anything I can leverage to benefit my people, uh, I'm going to do it. The fact of the matter is they put out a story saying I didn't take, I didn't even know she was trying to reach me, but she has no role in this process. And I've been dealing with these storms in Florida under both Trump and Biden. Neither of them ever politicized it. And in fact, all the storms I've dealt with under this administration, although I've worked well with the president, she has never called in Florida. She has never offered any support. So what she's doing is she's trying to inject herself into this because of her political campaign. So as the governor here who's leading this, I don't have time for those games. I don't care about her campaign. Obviously, I'm not a supporter of hers, but she's not, she has no role in this process. And so I'm working with the people I need to be working with. Uh, we're leveraging the resources I need to be leveraging. Um, and for her to try to say that my focus should be on catering to her rather than worrying about my own people, just so she doesn't understand uh, what it means to respond to these natural disasters. And Kamala has also been thrown under the bus by the resident of the White House, Joe Biden, who says he's having a great time with DeSantis. DeSantis has my phone number. Uh, he's an incredible governor. So there you go. All L's across the board. Here's President Trump's message to the people of Florida. Uh, this is what real leadership looks like. It's kind of beautiful to see Biden DeSantis, Trump getting along, like to put Americans first. That's the point here. That's the point. Hello, Florida. This is President Donald J. Trump. Melania and I are praying for you as you face the aftermath of Hurricane Milton. We are deeply saddened by the devastation being reported, and it sounds like it's as bad as it gets. And uh, we feel so sorry for you, and we want God to be with you, and we know God is with you. Our hearts go out to each and every one of you. To those who've lost so much, know that you are not alone. We've seen you stand tall against storms before, and you will stand tall now. And hopefully on January 20th, you're going to have somebody that's really going to help you and help you like never before, because help is on the way. Together, we will rebuild, we will recover, and we will come back stronger, bigger, better than ever before. Please keep your faith hold strong and look out for one another because the sun will shine again over the beautiful Florida that we love so much. I live there also. We love it so much. You're in our thoughts, and together we will come back better than before. You're going to be better than before. And just keep your chin up, and God bless you all, and God bless the great state of Florida.
Your governor is doing an excellent job. I've been talking to him and watching. Ron is doing a really good job. We're proud of him. And we're going to have something very, very special in the end. I think it's going to turn out a lot better than people thought. But this is a big one. So be very, very careful. Thank you very much.